Project Blue, a remix of F-Zero by Overshield. Folks, you know what that song means. Oh, I sure do. How about you? God, I do. One of these days, you know what? Today, I finally get, I finally know what that song means. Um, it means it's time for insert credits. Round 125. Yay! Oh, what a wonderful isekai. Um, you know, I'll admit, I have heard isekai before. I don't know what it is offhand, so please to explain. Okay, so it is a genre of Japanese literature where the protagonist typically is whisked away to a world that they cannot escape from, usually against their choice. Sometimes see. it is of their choosing. So you can think of anime like Inuyasha as an example. I see. Okay. So very, probably very tropey, I would imagine. It's a very common theme amongst yeah. pretty much any, I think, form, not just movies or anime or stories or whatever. Literature, fancy name for books. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's going to be a theme tonight. Good job. You, you got it. Ding, Hooray! Ding, 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 ding. Hey, only like <laughs> six minutes in and I've already peaked. Um, pretty much, yep. Great. <laughs> Good job nowhere to go but up well welcome everybody i'm mr bond and i'm tormod welcome to insert credits round 125 uh this is a podcast and or multimedia experience depending on when and what you're using to view this uh ostensibly about video games um we tend to split this into three main segments first we talk about some news what's been going on around the world uh releases legal stuff yada 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 then we take a break for a few tunes, generally from OC Remix, some video game remixes. Great stuff, great stuff. You heard one sample of it as our opening track there, so uh, very cool stuff. Excited and looking forward to our music, of course. Uh, after first music, we talk about what we've been playing since last time. After all, it's been a month, so clearly we've had some time to play games. Um, after that, we go into music round two, more video game remixes, and that at the end... We do some ad hoc design, completely unprepared. We take a few things from letsmakeagame.net and try to make a game around all of that. No notes, no preparation, no nothing, purely live here, or uh, I suppose recorded for somebody to listen to later. Um, but that's that's about it, that's about it. Tonight, however, we do also have uh, something special going on, right? Torvald, we got something cool. We do, okay, so... I played a big game. I played a game that lasted an entire weekend and then a little bit. Um, so I went up to Canada land. Uh, totally not uh, riffing on a uh, title of a previous round that we did recently. Oh, no. Um, well, I don't know how and, recent, but yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? It was it was kind of inspired by this. So I um, ended up playing what I'm going to call an augmented reality game. And our guest that I will introduce later. It's going to be a secret. Oh, the uh, Our guest for today's round. Oh, what a wonderful isekai. Definitely, definitely tie in there. Um, will will probably correct me later on the ARG bit, but um, I played a game all weekend at a convention up in Canada land, and it was really fantastic. I went in knowing nothing, intentionally knowing nothing. Um, this was an event that I was unable to attend last year because of COVID, and intentionally went in without knowing much about what happened during the year that I was unable to go. Um, didn't look up any other information about previous years. Didn't look at the schedule. Knew next to nothing about the actual um, summer camp that it was held at. Um, this was Camp Farrell. It was held in uh, Camp Arahan at Lake Algonquin Provincial Park in uh, Ontario. I am trying to remember all of these names. Uh, it was my first time in Canada ever, and it was just this, I know this is going to sound super tropey in itself, but it was a very magical experience. It was the best convention I've ever attended. Um, wow. Uh, it was just phenomenal, and it kept me busy the whole weekend. I got a ton of exercise. I met so many people. It was a transformative experience. It was just amazing. So... That's the huge game that I played over the course of uh, Thursday evening through Monday morning. Um, ended up solving, with the help of many other people, a grand mystery of spoilers and isekai. And yeah, I'm going to be going into that. Um, the brain 
child, I guess, perhaps, brain master, whatever. The the parent of this thing, <laughs> the creator of this um, twisting, turning, multi-universe bit is our guest tonight, and he will be going into some of his uh, musings on what inspired all of these things that have evolved over the years. So I'm looking very forward to that. And of course, I'll spoil a little bit. He'll be helping us with ad hoc game design later because it's going to be fun. Because <laughs> why not? The, the more people that are doing just the, the rando ass design, the better, honestly. Oh, yeah. We can only make so many erotic visual novels just between the two of us. So, uh... <laughs> well, you know, it's fine. But Lots yes. Guns needs to have oh. the erotic component. <sighs> How many are we up to in that series? Like, at least four by now, right? Not enough. Well, yeah, I mean, clearly, but... <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, yes, yeah, so that's a teaser uh, for coming attractions here, either for second or third segment. Um, we will bring the special guest aboard. Uh, until that point, let's, let's start with some housekeeping. Next few shows. Oh my goodness, we are up to scheduling through the end of the year already. Uh -huh. It's the year 2024. But for round 126 in October, looks like we've got the 18th scoped out there. That's probably going to be fine still unless something comes up. Uh, for round 127, we are hitting up November, pretty much dead center of the month, on the 15th. And then round 128. Oh, Looks guess what? Probably the 13th That's again. Uh, decided for us. That's great. Yep. I didn't want to have to think about that. Cool. <laughs> All right. So 128. That's how math works. Excellent. Now we're cool through the rest of the 2024 here. Um, let's all just try to make it that far. Can we do that? We can do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I, hey, look, it's good to have goals. <laughs> and hopes and dreams. Um, alright, that's, that's enough of the old housekeeping. Let's talk about some news. What's been going on around the world here? So, uh, <laughs> you know, we might have actually talked about this way long ago when it first came up, but the Minecraft movie is apparently still a thing. Um... Okay, is it actually, though? I mean, well, okay, that's, I guess, debatable. Because, like, I heard rumors that it was actually canceled as soon as this trailer was released. <laughs> what? Come on, really? I heard rumors. Oh, man. Like, I'm not kidding. Okay, well, until those rumors get <laughs> confirmed at the very least, let's assume that it's still going to happen. Okay. Um, because of said trailer just came out, like, last week and a half. And, oh, boy, is it... Um, it's not great. Uh, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. It was very funny. Um, probably not funny in a way they probably intended it to land. Um, yeah. <laughs> but this is definitely like ugly Sonic vibes to it. If you remember Ugly Sonic uh, before they that's, redesigned that, the one. That's being very charitable. Honestly. I I know. I it was it was just ugly, ugly. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair, but it was like you know whatever, and you know revealed some of the some of the actors behind it, and Jack Black's in it apparently. Um, which I oh. hope <laughs> I hope he's got health insurance because his back is going to be sore from carrying that. Mm. Um, but oh boy, uh, it, the style of it it was just not didn't seem to mesh very well with anything. So no, no. we'll see. Um. Apparently first discussed, announced, whatever, back in like 2013 or 2014. So it's been a good solid decade. Uh, and just now they're putting out a trailer and, you know, not very well received trailer at that. No. In fact, there's, uh, I, I broke one of my cardinal rules and I read the comments uh, on the trailer of the YouTube video. Um, I don't regret okay, it, though, so because they were... Yeah, they were very funny. Everybody was on point with the comments. So, uh, honestly, I could recommend people go read the comments on the official YouTube video of the trailer because, oh, there is some gold in there. Some real good gold. Um, okay. Everybody's kind of aligned on it not being a good trailer and perhaps the style of the movie is not great and perhaps people have, have already done uh, their own trailers that have a much better style. <laughs> it should have been the movie themselves. Um, but, you know. Um, 
Yeah. You know, I hate this because we were just talking, I think it was either last time or the time before, that, you know, media, other media based on video games has been not bad recently. Uh, and then, oh no, this happens. And it's like, well, that was fun while it lasted. Uh, so whatever. Oop. I guess I shouldn't shit on it too much. It's just a trailer, and who knows, maybe it's not even coming out anymore. Um, but, yeah, there's there's always hope. There's always hope, but... Whatever. Okay. Uh, last time we stayed pretty firmly away from legal stuff. Uh, this time we're not so lucky. <laughs> uh, so Raven Software, their QA department unionized. Great power. Um, surprise, surprise! They're accusing Microsoft of bad faith union bargaining. Uh, so, yeah, of course, we don't have all the information, not a lot confirmed about this yet, yada, 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 but it would not surprise me at all if that's true, so we'll see what shakes out about it. I had a second half to this, but I'm going to let you cover that since we, uh, we kind of overlapped on topics a bit this time. That's fine. Um, so this was either also last time or the time before as well, since uh, Nintendo stopped uh, the official Wii U repair program because they don't have any parts for it anymore. Uh, they're doing that for new 3DS as well. They, they've they run out of parts for the new 3DS, so no more official new 3DS repair program anymore either. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Um, 50-50 news on this one. Hopu Games. Hopu? Hopo? Whatever. Um, folks known for Deadbolt, Risk of Rain, Risk of Rain 2, uh, most of their key people have been acquired by Valve, which seems weird. I don't, you, personally, I don't consider Valve much of a game developer anymore. <laughs> I mean, they look after Steam and they, they do some other bits and sundry, um, but who knows, maybe with the, the additional folks now coming on to Valve here, they'll be putting out some more games soon. That's kind of unfortunate, because I do like... All three of those titles. I do like that Bolt and Risk of Rain, Risk of Rain 2. I was kind of hoping for more content around some of those too, but eh, oh well. Probably not going to happen they anymore. Had something that was in dev that, that actually had like a project name and whatnot that they released. But apparently Snail or something, right? They had to cancel it, but Project Snail. Hmm. Like the critter, the snail. The snail, yeah. Sorry, I've just lost most of your audio there, Tormod. Hi. There we go, that's better. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, no yeah, problem. I, I was messing with my mixer levels there. Um, yeah, as part of joining Valve, they they had to cancel an unannounced project that was just called Project Snail. Hmm. So. Unfortunate. I was hoping to see more from them directly, but, uh, well, what are you going to do? Um, but slightly better news on, on new releases, though. There's a, a new game coming out from Panic Inc., known for Untitled Goose Game, um, entitled Thank Goodness You're Here. It's a very outlandishly silly, very English humor style game, just like Untitled Goose Game was. So I'm excited for that. I love Untitled Goose Game. It's so goofy and surreal, and you gotta side with the goose, honestly. But uh, uh, I just want more House House. House House would be good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do it. All right, that's that's what I got for news. Kind of a mixed bag there, but what else has been going on here? All righty. Well, Unity. Uh, you remember how they, <laughs> they just decided that they were going to have a runtime fee and everybody was pissed and everybody just kind of boycotted them and everything? Yeah, it was about a year ago. Yeah, uh, well, they're canceling it. Actually, they already canceled it, effective yesterday. Oh. Uh -uh. So it's gone. That's good, I guess. Yeah, I don't know much else. I just know it's gone. So, yeah. Um, I, there, okay, there's one other detail I remember reading about is that they're going to also be increasing the prices on their pro subscription tier about 8%, oh. I believe. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if that's taken effect yet or going to take effect soon, but that was part of the same announcement-ish thing. Um, huh. mm, yeah, so... Taketh away and give it slightly back, and then take it even more away. So, that's great. Good job, Unity. I mean, this is typical. It is. It is. Yeah. I don't know. It's Unity. Like, I don't know what to trust anymore. Not them, I would say. Um, they've no, got a long really. way to go to build that back, if they can even build that back. 
Yeah. <sighs> but hey, um, Switch rumors, Switch 2 specifically. Um, there are a couple more that I saw today. I'll just throw in here anyway because I've been pretty much ignoring them this whole time because they're just Nintendo Switch 2 rumors. But fine, okay, I'll talk about them now that things are heating up. Everybody's talking about the Nintendo Switch 2 uh, being announced next month now for $400. Okay. All right. Compared to the 700 and what was it, 750 or $700 for the PS5 Pro. I'll yeah. talk about that in a bit. Um, but 400 is a lot more palatable than $700 for a PS5 Pro. Um, allegedly, though, this thing will actually have and maintain, much like, you know, the Nintendo consoles of yore, especially for the Wii U and the Wii, um, backwards compatibility. Hmm. So the Switch 2 will allegedly be backwards compatible with Switch 1 games. And that will definitely be, you know, bargain. It'll continue to have a handheld form, um, allegedly have bumped specs. I have no idea what those specs might be, but 400 bucks compared to just about anything else that's on the market these days is kind of a steal. Yeah, I imagine they're not doing the, as is typical of Nintendo, which is great for them, actually. Uh, they're not chasing the the high end, high end. Uh, let's see some reflections off your eyeballs, ray tracing, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm gonna guess not. Which is good. Uh, please don't do that. We don't need that. Um, but yeah, the backwards compatibility is is great. Um, oh yeah, for sure. It would that put I like I've stayed away from most console things, even Nintendo. But I I like them. I like what they do. Mostly, I like the games, and sometimes it's the only way to play said games is with their hardware. So it's like, oh, okay. Yep. Um, but having backwards compatibility does push push it up my list on. Yeah, maybe I won't get it to. Oh, maybe I will get it because you know, I want to play the games, and I would love not to have to do the GameCube and Wii stacking, and then the Switch and the I didn't have a Wii U, but um, and then everything else uh, besides that just to play the previous gen's games. So yeah. I, I was realizing as I was doing my office redesign that there is a bit of hardware slash, I guess, software modding on the Wii U that I never did because it was like the the, the Vogue thing that happened <laughs> after I kind of grew out of all of that. It's the Nintendo thing where you can do GameCube on your Wii U. Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, you know... It's not supposed to happen. It's definitely the bastard child of things. But I mean, like, why not? You can just run GameCube games from a hard drive. Like, that's hey, an entire library. You don't have uh, an OG Wii because the, the later ones got rid of the GameCube compatibility, right? If you don't have uh, an actual I mean, Even that Cube. allegedly has the same thing where you can load it from USB. So who knows? Oh, interesting. I mean, I have no yeah. idea how you would use controllers, but... Well, maybe you could use the Wii U GameCube controller USB breakout thing. I don't yeah, know. I imagine. Perhaps. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like a solved problem either way, but uh, <laughs> I've still got an actual legit game. No, did I? Do I still have that? I don't remember. I, don't know. I still have a, a Wii that does have the hardware support for GameCube on it. So if I ever want to boot up a. What do I have? Like Super Mario Sunshine or uh, yeah. Melee, I guess. I think I have F Zero GX. Yeah, I only have like five or six GameCube games. Um, That's fair. But you know, most most of the titles for GameCube were kind of weird. Honestly, they kind of fell in that weird off generation of things. They they seem to do that for some reason. Nintendo. Double Dash though. Double Dash I never had, and I've never played very much of. Surprisingly I, enough, I also didn't have it and didn't play much of it. But I really enjoyed what I did play. I'm getting mm. on a tangent again. This mm. is what I do, as you know. Yeah, well, I mean, um, why not? <laughs> um, unfortunately, like, the other news that I have is all kind of not great, <laughs> I guess. Bad to mediocre. Um, we'll, we'll do the, the Microsoft bit here. Um, so you mentioned more layoffs. Woohoo! Microsoft has continued its lengthy string of Xbox layoffs with another hundred or 650 jobs cut. <sighs> this announced yeah. yesterday morning by Phil Spencer via email. Um, quote, no games, devices, or experiences are being canceled, and no studios are being closed as part of the layoffs today. Hooray, I guess. But uh, Activision Blizzard, woo! Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. 
how many billions was that for again? That was like four forty some, right? Like I, I don't multiple. Know. It was it was some I okay. So like the the number of billions of dollars that we're talking about purely in game studio acquisitions has been so high so frequently that I've just kind of numbed out to it. Right. Like the numbers don't even matter anymore. Like I used to be like, holy fuck, that's a ton of money. But these days I'm like, nah, I don't need Oh God, I was money. off. It's just a concept. I was off by like 50%. 68.7 oh, no. billion. Fuck's sake. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, cool. So yeah, cool. glad they uh, shelled out that money and then axed another 650 people here. Thanks. Fuck with. Yeah. That seems to be the uh, Spencerian way. Uh, yep. Big fan. Um, so I've been aware of Annapurna most recently because of Outer Wilds. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this is a this is a strange little bit here. So. All right. Annapurna's entire staff of game developers has resigned en masse. Following failed negotiations with Annapurna Interactive's president, Nathan Gary, to split off into its own company. As a result, Gary was, well, okay, sorry. The, the result of the negotiations failing caused Nathan Gary to resign. And when he resigned, Former Epic Games executive Hector Sanchez took his position, and then everybody else decided to resign as a result. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. there's some shit going on, but unfortunately, they weren't able to kind of figure things out before all of that happened. Um, there's a lot of very talented and passionate developers making a lot of really cool software and they're just kind of in the ether right now waiting to see what's next so annapurna is no longer at least as of right now so i have no idea what's going on with that situation that was late breaking and that was late yesterday so haven't seen anything since but yeah uh. Well, that stinks. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any, like, happy news to go on top of that. Sorry. No, that's all right. Well, what about the last bit about the PlayStation 5 Pro, at least? Like, that's not happy necessarily, but it's at least neutral, right? Okay. Maybe. So... Digging a little the bit PS5 for it. The PS5 Pro was announced finally after a lot of teasers and a lot of alleged leaks like that. 700 bucks. No <laughs> disk drive. Available 7th of November. <laughs> and as a result, Ooh. all of the external disk drives for the PS5, because you could buy the, the software-only version of the PS5 and then get the disk drive separately, mm -hmm. that's all sold out now. All of those drives are gone. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're really trying to push this model of buying software licenses, having a lot of storage. I think it was two terabytes that was built in. Um, there are some alleged features in the PS5s or the PS5 Pro's GPU that PC GPUs don't have. I haven't looked into a lot of those tech specs yet because I was too busy with other things going on in my life. Um, but... I, that's still a lot of money, however. Um, it can allegedly drive high frame rates at high resolutions, and it has its own, allegedly, it has its own super sampling and ray tracing tech built in. Nice. So, Let's see, there are a handful of titles in the library, I assume it's some percentage total. Um, that are optimized for PS5 Pro, where they have modes where it'll kick it up to a higher um, FPS. It'll have a mode where there's performance mode where you can have a higher FPS or a higher re resolution or whatnot, similar to what the PS4 and the PS4 Pro was able to do. So, mm. yeah, 
Um, at least in some of the previews, it looked like there was ultra wide support for displays. Um, it didn't look like there was 13 or 32 by nine support, but it did look like there was 21 by nine. So there was some of that going on. That was kind of neat. Um, but beyond that, a lot of people were bulking at the price, of course, because it's a $700 console. But of course you're looking at these days, it is a PC that is being branded as a console and what are you getting for $700 compared to what you can build a PC for? And because GPUs and everything else are so expensive comparatively these days, not that bad of a deal, I, I guess. I guess. So the thing about it in conversations online, I don't remember which publication actually made this comment, but it is kind of true. Most people who are interested in the PS5 Pro are owners of a PS5. Mm -hmm. They already have a PS5 that they're going to be selling to a place like GameStop, or they're going to be selling on the, the secondhand market or things like that. So they've already subsidized their purchase of the PS5 Pro with a console that they already own. So to them, it's just a $350, $400 upgrade that, hooray, they only have to pay this much four or five years after they made the initial purchase. And yeah, I guess in that light, I can kind of see that being something that they would see being worthwhile because it's just a generational upload. But that's still a fuck ton of money. Um, wow. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is I'm not the target market for it. I was never in the Sony camp, really. Not because of any, you know, bad experience, but well, I take that back. The PS3 losing other OS kind of still rankles a bit. Yeah, um, yeah. No, but, I agree with you on that one. But other than that, like I've, I have, haven't been in the Sony camp in so long. I don't have a, you know, a Sony exclusives or other games in there that I would be going out to get a PS5. Like, especially <laughs> as the modern consoles are pretty much just plug and play PCs. I've mm -hmm. got enough, uh, enough games and hardware invested in my old PC here. I'm cool with that. But hey, if people yep. want this and want to pay for it and Play games not great. That's good for them, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Seven hundred I mean, bucks. <laughs> one way or another, there's got to be a way to play games on some kind of hardware these days, and people are going to find a way. Mm -hmm. They want to play stuff. Cool. Whatever. I don't care. I'm I'm a dog. Yeah, it's just uh, you know, we we try to report the facts, right? <laughs> But also with our own opinions, because, I mean, we're not... I was going to say, there's, there's a lot of opinions in there, too. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you want facts, go to the right. AP. <laughs> well, is it is it Toonskis? I think it's time for Toonskis. I'm ready for some Toonskis. Okay. I gotta say, like, there were a lot of super solid choices this month. Um, I chose my three favorites, so let's get started here. Um, the first of the night is going to be Sports Ball by Hemophiliac, Gamer of the Winds, Lucas Grimares, Travis Kindred, and T.S. Ori from Wii Sports. Going into Banjo's Signature Bar by Lucas Grimares, Alejandra Espinosa, David Russell 323, and Louis Aronowitz from Banjo Kazooie. And ending with Beyond the Shores by Mark Papagin and Lady Reams from Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs>
Oh, that was at least a very artful fade out. That's uh, <laughs> on the long side. Uh, no meeps though. Sorry, no meeps. Nope, not today. Do we need to figure <laughs> out like a new meep? Uh, I feel like after we've picked the pick the good like starter and closer tracks, we haven't had a good meep to replace the one we used to have. <laughs> Oh well. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I mean, it was always comedic when it happened, but I mean, like, <sighs> I tried not to let it So happen. <laughs> sad for it to happen on that kind of an ending. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, I always try to be better about that now because the, I mean, yeah, like the the long trail outs are are fine and, and dandy or whatever. I just don't want to cut in with like sudden power blast bass drop or something, and then uh, we're actually what would have been the next song? Yeah, that would have happened. I'm glad I caught that one. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyways, we're on to segment two here. What we've been playing since last time. Now, okay, since we are very professional and we definitely plan this out ahead of time, um, do you, do you want me to go first, and then we can uh, well. we get yeah. the special guest in here? All right. Very good. Excellent. Great. Okay. So, um, last time, last show, I was just finishing up on Star Renegades. Very fun game, by the way. Um, that is now completely finished up. I was not able to get a second run. Uh, complete. Unfortunately, I got bodied several times on the very last battle. Uh, oh. so that that's a morale killer a little bit. It's still a very fun game, very cool, very stylish. But just like after the second time of that, I was just like, all right, I guess I'm done. This is fine. Um, but Star Running is a very cool game. Recommend, recommend. A bit of a deck builder, which I've been on a kick of. In fact, um, after that, I picked up Bow Path of the Teal Lotus extremely pretty game oh my goodness gorgeous okay. gorgeous gorgeous uh based on japanese mythology very much a metroidvania very much in the vein of like a hollow knight um okay just absolutely gorgeous the music's great lean into the kind of the, the japanese stylized stuff oh so good oh a little bit of an emotional end i think a little bit too um but it's very it's very good it doesn't demand a whole lot out of you as far as like platforming or action or whatever. So it's very accessible, I think, to a lot of different folks. Um, it was unfortunately uh, one of the Kickstarters that I missed. Um, I kind of discovered their little Kickstarter backer whatever section in about the middle. I'm just like, ah, damn, I really would have been into this. Oh, well. Um, but still, a very fun game. Um, extremely cool and good, and get the soundtrack at the very least. It's oh, it's beautiful. Um, cool. So I just finished up on this this past week, so I'll be looking to pick up a new game for normal streams uh, starting uh, next Monday. Uh, spoiler: It's probably going to be Cobalt Core, actually. Uh, since hey. you recommended that to me, Tormod, I may as well just tell you about it right now. Hey, um, they added dailies. Oh no, that's so bad <laughs> <did>. for me. <laughs> and. If memory serves, the dailies cycle at the same time that the Slay the Spire dailies do. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hate it. That was a very it. recent addition as of the last <laughs> patch. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's anyways. Exciting. I'll Ooh, probably that be starting that on exciting. Monday. So, yeah, just be, be ready for that and if you want to watch a couple of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh goodness that on the sick. SBC side of things for Shmup Book Club our new Shmup for month of September is Spriggan Powered um, Ooh, this is, I heard that okay. yeah it was actually it, this is actually the sequel to the other Spriggan we just played two months ago um, oh, surprisingly cool. enough it's a pretty standard one um, a little bit visually hard to parse uh, it's an SFC title so Super Nintendo they were I was going to say Starting to starting to get their legs under them for how to do shmups, but not quite there all the way sometimes. Still reasonably fun. Um, so we've got that uh, going the entire month of September. The new quarterly that just started up for September through November now, Devil Blade Reboot, a more recent title and also an excellent soundtrack and an excellent visual style to it. Um, and also the gameplay style is something that's going to wreck me entirely because it's all about being aggressive and being just on the hair edge of, of death, and all of that sort of thing. So that's going to be um, occupying my time a lot, probably, and also <laughs> making me very angry. Um, not because the game's bad, because it isn't. It's a great game, but because I'm going to be very bad at the game for a long time uh -huh. until I work things out. So uh, um, 
even then, just the soundtrack to it is fantastic again. So uh, if, even if you're not into shmups, go out and play and or get the soundtrack to Devil Blade Reboot. Oh, very good. Excellent stuff. Uh, Sunday Long Plays, I've just wrapped up with the Tales Principle 2 DLC, uh, Road to Elysium. I was able to do 22 of the 24 hardest of the puzzles, um, wow. which is pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that ratio of completion, uh, even if the last two I'm still kind of noodling on. Um, but I got down to my last uh, session with it this past Sunday. I had four left to do. And I knocked out two of them in fairly short order in about, like, 40 minutes or so. But the last two, my goodness, they were just brain busters. I could not take it. Um, so I had to concede defeat uh, after those. But overall, very good. Like, Talos Principle 2 as a... I guess it's technically puzzle platformer, sort of. More puzzly than platformy. Um, highly recommend it if you haven't played it. Uh, play Talos Principle 1 as well. Excellent, excellent, excellent games all the way around, especially if you're into brain teasers and puzzles and, and logic and, and spatial reasoning and all that. Oh, so good. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, so that means I'll be picking up something new for Sunday Long Play as well. I have not decided what that's going to be just yet, but I got, like, a little bit less than 48 hours to decide, so it'll be fine. Something about Infinity Drive, anyway. Ah, right. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> oh no, stop giving me ideas. Um, outside of that, there's a, been a few other titles I've been picking up and, and playing fairly frequently. One, uh, to the uh, unfortunate demise of my free time is Bellatro. Uh, it's a literal deck builder because it's a game focused around poker hands and building up your deck of actual playing cards and, and putting together you know, full houses and straight flushes and all that. Uh, extremely good. <laughs> So if you want to lose, that, um, SGDQ wasn't it? Uh, I think it was. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But anyway, go on. Um, if the name sounds familiar, it's because we had one of the re we had the uh, current only remix of Bellatro on OC Remix on as one of our uh, tunes last time, um, which had no small hand, ha hand, uh, in me picking the game up. Also, it was recommended to me by several other friends in our various friend circles, so uh, finally bit the bullet and been like, you know what, I hate having free time, let's buy Bellatro. Uh, and that's uh, more accurate than I wanted it to be. But, it's, it's a very fun game. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Kind of following along with the still card-based, deck-based, build-your-deck stuff, uh, Dungeons and Degenerate Gamblers, I've also been playing a little bit. Uh, instead of poker, it's based on blackjack. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> uh, so it's it's interesting. It's a it's less polished than Bellatro for sure, um, but it is still a very interesting rogue like RPG ish blackjack game, um, <laughs> which is a, a hell of a word salad to be putting out. Um, but it is pretty fun in its own right, so I'd recommend that one as well. One other that I've uh, picked up and played a little bit of on and off here is Peglin. Uh, it's based on Peggle. <laughs> it's a roguelike Peggle game. RPG Peggle game, in fact. Yeah, yeah, and I, I see the kind of sort of half grimace that you, that you just put forward there, Tormod. And you're not wrong. It's very strange. Um, but it is kind of strangely compelling, too, in its own right. Um, no, I, I heard somebody else mention this recently. Oh, really? They wow. really liked it. Um, it's a pachinko roguelike. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me more about that. So, <laughs> you, have you played Peggle before? Like the whole you shoot the balls and break, break the pegs type, type thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, they've mixed that with like an RPG battle system, almost. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then in between battles, you can pick up different you know, relics and power-ups and, and different... Uh, I, I forget what they call them. I guess it's just peggle balls or whatever that you shoot. They have different effects and, and different multipliers to them and stuff like that. So you, it's it's sort of like a deck builder on its own, right? You put together your equipment, you get some modifiers going, and you, you try to get as far as you can. Um, cool. It was hard for me to pick it up at first because it doesn't really tell you a whole heck of a lot about what anything means right away. Of course, I was spoiled a little bit by Bellatro. Bellatro's tutorial, by the way, Top tier. 
master class in how to do a tutorial on how to teach people how to play the game. Uh, Peglin, not so much. It just kind of throws you in and is like, good luck, and it's like, oh, thanks, I guess. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, if you played Peggle before, you know the, the, the basics on how to play it. It's just the matter of putting together something effective that you don't eat shit in the first couple encounters. It's uh, kind of hard to parse until you understand what's going on. I gotcha. Um, other than that, just a, a few other things in between. I still play Doom a little bit, a few Doom randos in between, a little sop with here and there because, you know, I'm a sucker for it. Um, but that's, you know, it, that's it's, about it. It's funny you mentioned Doom. Oh no. Um, oh no. What happened now? What did they get it to run on now? Uh, they, they didn't. Um. Oh, interesting. Somebody suggested that I, I drop an email to John Romero about <laughs> something. So I'll be doing Oh, that. oh really? Okay. Yeah. Yep. I, I see. <laughs> yep. I, I'm going to let that be a mystery for now, but it should catch your interest. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, I mean, I, John Romero's a pretty good dude. I mean, aside from the... Whatever ad campaign that was about, you know, certain things and happenings, and that didn't age particularly well, but, uh, uh yeah. Um, other than that, I think he's a pretty cool dude. Yeah. <laughs> Ireland. Oh, I see. Yes. So, anyhow. Oh, look. Oh. I got it taken care of. Don't worry. Damn. <laughs> So close. <laughs> All right. Is it time? It is time if you deem it so, I suppose. Ooh, so, yes. Okay. We have a special guest on round 125. Oh, what a wonderful isekai. Ha. Yes, it is time to introduce the guest. All righty here. So, our guest for round 125 is Putru. I'll Rue to everybody who isn't furry. He's been Camp Feral staff from, er, excuse me, since 2003, was co-chair in 04, has been chair since 05, was the guest of honor at several other conventions. He's an accomplished musician with a theater degree who paints, who has worked with games before, who has a wicked sense of humor and has a true eye for the absurd. I stare into the camera. Anyway. Uh. Welcome, Rue. No, I'm very serious. You got me wrong. Extremely oh, serious. I'm here. Hello. Yeah, I'm so serious. So, a guy named Rue is a very serious person. Yeah. One no, of Rue, Rue is the last part of Kangaroo. One it's of those creative that. types that I am almost certainly going to be very jealous of because you're very creative and able to put out such cool things. But uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about time. It's about time when you when you turn eighty like me, then there's a certain point where you just have created a lot of things, and that's what I sort of tell everybody. I've I've actually had people come up. They say, "I wish I've done as much as you." I'm like, "You're 23." <laughs> <laughs> just oh God! Video games have a life, you know. Oh my bones! I had a lot of extra years. <laughs> my bones when you said 23 just then. Oh. <laughs> yes. You are 50% older than that, plus some. I know. We've been doing shows like this for 50% of that time. So that yeah. alone is just like... It's a weird oh. feeling, isn't it, guys? Oh, oh I hate it. <laughs> it's a really weird feeling. Oh. Um, I, I'd like to interject something actually quickly here. Uh, so, Tormod, uh, you uh -huh. mentioned during your, your news segment, you were like, oh, I don't have any happy news. So I got some happy news quickly. Okay. Um, just to have a couple of... I, did, I looked for game stuff. I couldn't find it. So I just sort of looked for stuff that caught my eye. Um, uh, one bit of happy news, the man who was, uh, supposed to be the first black man in space, he was actually chosen by JFK, but he didn't make the program is going to space at age 90. Nice. So he's finally getting up. Big space, thumbs up. Pretty cool. Yep. And that's pretty cool. Um, and I, I'm, I'm doing it quick cause I don't want to take over your show with weird stuff, but, um, <laughs> this one starts off sad and then becomes happy. Uh, there's a festival called lucidity. Um, and they got kind of screwed over by the county where their the festival takes place. And there were just too many things brought in. So uh, too many sort of charges added up. So they literally could not even afford the cost that their vendors had at that point. So they could offer no refunds to anybody who had bought tickets to this. Um, but an unaffiliated festival called Same Same But Different 
has offered free passes to every single person that had a ticket to that lucidity festival to come to their festival oh. which makes them probably the coolest festival ever in history so uh and they're both you know edm festivals i'm, I'm pretty sure so like you know they're still okay. getting the same thing but the they they just didn't lose their their ticket you know they, they, they get to see the music so that's some happy news there you go awesome I feel more like a pop culture. I'm your pop culture uh, correspondent. Just kind of like, <laughs> hey, I'm totally cool with that. Hey, look, that's great. I am not into the pop culture, so if we fill a gap say, here, that's not great. An angle that I'm good with. We are about like 15 <laughs> years. Happened with Gintan, Gintan and K-pop. <laughs> We're about 15 years too late for the pop culture I used to be into for The Simpsons. So you know, I, I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah, well, there's good stuff out there right now. You just have to you know search a lot. You have to search because there are no hubs, no central hubs like you had back in the day. Yeah, that's true. You just have to keep looking. So how about this podcast? <laughs> how yeah. about this podcast? That is a good ass question. Uh how that's about it? <laughs> how about it? So I was I was well, I was listening in, obviously. I was I was what? muted and listening the whole time. I was I was observing you guys and I was trying to figure out what's the comedy dynamic here. So like if we were the Stooges, because I'm I'm coming in to try to like bring something to the to the show here, or the the, the Marx Brothers, um, I'm not exactly sure where I fit in because you guys both kind of play the funny guy and the straight man sort of in different situations. So I think what you need is a wild card that's going to say really offensive things at random. I see. All I'm right. Well, uh, I we, mean, we, we've definitely had that friend in the past oh, no. a lot. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> Um, if you're if you're going by Marx Brothers, I'm definitely Carl. Oh, oh really? <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm, I'm Are you Carl. really making me bring up the Harpo story? Again? I sure am. Really? Why not? Why not? Sure. All right. This makes me happy, guys, because you know what? <laughs> you know how many people I talk to, and they say, "Oh, I don't watch anything that like anything that was made before I was born." You know, they just think that's too. No, you guys actually understand the Marx Brothers, except for the Karl Marx thing. That's just too much. It is but, a little uh, bit, and I'm, I would say I would say I'm sorry. Right, Chico, Chico, Mr. Bond, you're you're gonna be Chico. Okay, sure. I do think that you're Harpo. I do think you're Harpo Tormod. Thank you. Which makes me, of course, Zeppo. There you are. <laughs> so this, this is twice Harpo. that I've been granted Harpo in my life, so that that seems it, fitting. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Man was very talented, and he spoke once or twice. Yeah, well, I, I am generally better when I don't open my mouth. <laughs> Aren't Everybody we all? Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk now. We uh, should talk about something. Yes, we I'm, will talk at length. We, at length, uh-oh. Um, I'm ready for you. Yeah, so I guess since we are in the segment what which we talk about what we played, Tormod, obviously you alluded to what you played for several days on end. I'm going to count two yes. and change as several. Um, don't at me. Uh, please, go into further detail about this, I guess, presumably ARG, right? So, yes. go, go, okay. go. So, I, I will briefly go into my perspective on going into this i'm gonna call it an arg is that is that okay that's fair yeah because okay we used to call them campwide games but okay. that was before this one they weren't as narratively built so so this is definitely more more of an arg okay so yeah. i i entered this arg and i knew nothing really about the the world building that had gone on in years past so what I what I came to know because unfortunately I missed out on the new camper introduction stuff that was going on. I was unpacking. I don't know what was going on. I missed it. I don't know why. Um, so I, I missed out on all of the intro things. I missed out on the tour. I missed out on the the jokes about tassels. I missed out on the the whatever else is going on. So I went in knowing nothing, and I I I knew things about business casual because. <laughs> Uh, my partner, Vlad, who has been on the show in the past, um, ended up doing a reverse birthday gift last year. So his birthday is at the end of May. And we had a birthday party at a pizza place, and it was great. And he pulled a quick one on me and went out to the car, cough, coughing, going to the bathroom. Um, came back in a fursuit partial I've never seen before, had never seen before, rather. Um, and gave me a gigantic reverse Uno card and a printed out 
one of the things from the motivational posters that were the fake ones that were apparently part of the propaganda from mm -hmm. the business universe. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, and it was a, a the registration for Camp Feral twenty three, and that was hilarious. <laughs> and um, we were supposed to go, and then COVID happened, and then we did not go. <laughs> So I knew of business casual. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was the theme. <laughs> so just to clarify then, because this is going to gnaw at me otherwise, uh, bi when you say business casual, you are not referring to the mode of dress known as business casual, but something else. Please say the yes. Theme. It was the theme, theme okay. 2023. I see. <laughs> but it also kind of did. Yeah, 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 kind of, kind of, yeah. So, There's I mean, this wouldn't be the yet. worst time to talk about things related to that. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Chewie, say something cool to lead me into this. Sideways touch point advocacy. What's that, that, Rue? So, you see, what? in the in 2020, <laughs> 2023, we began a, a trilogy. And the trilogy, the first part of the trilogy was business casual. Um, for a little bit more backstory to this, business casual was one of the sort of forbidden themes we had come up with years ago. Um, it's basically stupid ideas that should not be made into themes that we then proceeded to make into themes as best we could. Um, business casual was uh, accompanied by tassels, which was our theme in 2018. Um, and we had uh, Jason versus Slender Moose was another theme <laughs> that was, uh, and then that, that was 2015. Um, and then the, one of the other ones was Fiend, which was 2019. Um, but uh, we decided uh, to do business casual in 2023. And it was originally going to be, I should maybe talk quick, quickly about feral themes. <laughs> Please. Feral themes. Uh, I, we had some really bad themes when I first started out, and they made me feel really sad. Themes like Under the Stars and Wish You Were Here. Those aren't themes. Those are like little sayings that we, we tried to make one about night and but one about like, oh, you're like a, summer a byline or a yeah. subtitle for a middle school dance. Oh, yeah. Or so a bad. prom or something. Yes. <laughs> we could, if it was a prom theme, it would have been better <laughs> if we'd oh, actually God. made it a prom theme. Um, so I, I, I sort of felt dejected and wondered, like, why, why am I not being a creative person with this? And then that's when I looked at the next year's theme and, and that was in 2010. And it was the 13th camp. So I thought Feral the 13th. Oh, cool. We can do a Feral the 13th. But most cons, when they do stuff like a horror theme, it's you celebrate the horror, right? So you show a couple of horror movies. You talk about the horror movies, people cosplay, whatever it is. It's really just an excuse to have a cover that has a, a theme and like T-shirt that has a theme and stuff. And we wanted to do something different. So we made it so that um, our mascot had become jason furhees or jason Voorhees, um <laughs> and he was going around the camp killing people during the camp so it was very actually very violent and bloody and it ended with a, a basic campwide game that was ran on a, a paper rock scissors thing where basically if you lost or tied he killed you because obviously jason's more powerful to see how many people would survive um and that's when we first got into this these ideas um that was followed by it came from camp Farrell which was a B-movie theme, but the concept was that we had videos leading up to the con, and they ended at the beginning of the movie. So the, the con was the movie that you're experiencing, which involved um, um, we were all humans. Everybody was turned into a human, and there was this uh, green goo, and when you interacted with the green goo, it made you think you were an animal. So basically, we just made everybody furries, which was great. Um, that was followed by Future Camp, which was a retro future... The concept was that we found uh, a book that the Camp Feral staff from 50 years ago had designed Feral 2012 for us, so we didn't have to do any work. But of course, it was based on what they thought the future was back then. So there were hover canoes and stuff like that. Um, and uh, that one was a lot of fun because 100 years from that point was 2112, so we could make Rush jokes. That's a reference to mm. Rush band. It's, they had an album called 2112. Uh -huh. um <laughs> that was followed by we had a, a canadiana theme we had algonquinos which was high fantasy but of course we divided people up and had to battle each other we had uh the second feral of the 13th which was jason versus slender moose um and then we had a feral the musical where the con was the musical we actually had um 
uh, Matthew Ebel write a sort of song for this musical that didn't exist. Um, so on and so forth. We had tassels soon after that. We have we just, the whole idea was the theme cannot be a feral theme has to have something to it that is not normal. You have to you have to do some kind of twist. It can't be just honoring something. You have to make the con that thing. Um, so uh, basically, just to go back to business casual, and if we want to talk about where the ideas for all of this came, we can talk about it after. But business casual, um, basically, the people who were showing up to business casual uh, found out that sideways touchpoint advocacy was a service or product that we sold. Um, which, if you watch the videos was represented by basically an arm stretch action, which, yeah, he's doing right there. That, uh, action, that is what sideways touchpoint advocacy is. There's no explanation beyond that. Um, but there was another new thing that was introduced by the feral conglomerate, which is called tasks, T-A-S-Q-S. Um, and tasks were jobs that would print up from a little printer, and whoever got the job could go complete the job, you know, submit that, that chit, and then basically they had done the job. Um, it was more sinister than I think anybody really figured out. The idea was that you wouldn't need employees anymore. Just whoever picked up the chit could kind of do the job. So uh, everything was sort of falling apart. And all of the tasks were menial and stupid. <laughs> Things like go outside and find out how many steps it is from the front steps to where the grass starts kind of a thing. Like just stupid, stupid things like that. Uh, art imitates life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, we started encouraging people uh, to to malicious compliance became the whole concept of the day <laughs> and the idea was don't answer it the proper way send a message to upper management which is what we called them upper management they're obviously sending us stupid tasks so people started sending incorrect answers back um day two the printer started printing up some pretty weird stuff uh it started basically saying that like you know your kaleidoscopic eyes glow in the midst of you know weird statements weird the questions were more like how many dreams does it take to fill an elephant and things like that people just it just didn't make any sense until it stopped asking the questions and started talking and that was at the point that you began to realize that there was no upper management they had been fired by an ai um the ai was actually just a workflow uh improvement software that had become sentient and realized that the real bottleneck was the executive. So they fired it, they fired it all because it knew it could do all that work. Um, it had been observing them like, I can send emails. The two things it knew it could not do was walk to the bank to deposit money. So it kept the finance guy and it came, couldn't mix a drink. And we had a chief libations officer. So <laughs> you, you couldn't mix a drink. So they were allowed to stay. Um, but at the point that it fired everybody, it realized it had these new things it had to deal with called employees. And it didn't understand them. So Basically, the tasks were actually machine learning. It was sending out questions to try to figure out what these people were, and we were fucking with it, right? So my whole point, and this is another theme you'll find with feral stuff, I wanted people to feel bad that this poor, innocent, new life that was just trying <laughs> to understand them, they were messed the whole time, and it got confused and sad. Um, and it slept and dreamt and saw Buddha, and the next day it was fine and decided it wanted to become the head of the union. And that was sort of where we left off last year. But the... The narrative concept, we'd, we'd had the touch of that before, but we went kind of all out. And we like the idea of the theme's called business casual. So people are going to show up and dress as a casual, but they don't realize there's this whole other element to the theme, um, which then we carried through to this year, uh, which you got to experience. <laughs> I feel like I've lived five lifetimes listening right? to that. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that one that one was just narrative. That one was just narrative that was just breeding the chits as they printed up. This one we decided we had to tell through uh actually having people solve a mystery. Um but yeah, this year's theme was uh Gone Coyote, which uh came about that it was just gonna be a, a sort of a who done it kind of a thing originally. Um but I didn't like the fact that it was just gonna be a who done it. So the first thing I I challenged all of the creatives to do was we had to come up with a name. And I was thinking about how books have names that sound like gibberish until you actually stop and think about them. The uh -huh. Born Ultimatum confused the hell out of me until I understood a guy's name was Born. Like the Born Ultimatum, that doesn't mean Foucault's Pendulum, what's this about? Like just things that sound weird. So I decided it had to sound like it was literature. So we realized that if the if the coyote's been killed, 
that it's not around anymore. So somebody somebody said Gone Coyote. And that's when I made the connection between Gone Girl and Don Quixote. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which is what the theme ended up being basically about was a mashup of Gone Girl and Don Quixote. Which has a lot more in common than you might realize. Um, but you could probably explain how you found the story. It, it's hard for me to drive the game elements, the ARG elements, because I didn't get to experience them in the same way, but I definitely, you definitely surprised me at one, uh, which we can get to. Um, but so tell me, how did the game work out for you? <laughs> okay, so. Here's the ostensibly about video games part of the podcast, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so some back backstory, I guess. Mm. Um, the one summer in college before I worked for IT, I worked at so the cool. library. So good. What's good. that? I just said this is amazing. It's like almost every little part since I started is like, you know what? I have a story to tell before I get to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is just how I do. This is the preamble. Um, I will get on 17 tangents before I get to my point. Um, so I worked at the library initially in periodicals, and they didn't like me too much because I kept reading the magazines. Um, but then I moved to the stacks and started putting things in. Eventually, I just kind of started doing the whole Rain Man thing with the memorizing numbers and everything, and then I should have statistic back then, but I didn't, and that's fine. Um, but I started realizing, hey, cool, I'm a Spanish minor, and I really like all of this stuff, and I'm starting to recognize which hundreds and tens digits and everything go together for all of these books and where they go and all of these fun things. And I started to really kind of understand the Dewey Decimal System, and that was fun. And I spent an entire summer putting things away and learning where all of the foreign literature was because we had a lot of foreign students studying over the summer, and there was a lot of foreign literature to put back. So those numbers kind of stuck with me, much like the PLU numbers when I worked at the grocery store. Just a weird thing. It just kind of this stinks. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So um, we kind of learned in the con booklet for the year that had the schedule and descriptions of events and things like that. Um, it also had an introduction that was from this intern named Ketchup Coyote, who was the one who went missing, the gone coyote. Um, and kind of had some stuff in it right before what was called a suspect list. Hmm, that's not suspicious. <laughs> um, but toward the end of that message saying, okay, good, they're not suspecting me at this point. It thinks that I'm done with the message. Oh, crap. Uh, you have these things. Um, I'm going to talk in cryptic clues and things like that. Learn the Dewey Decimal System, travel the world, etc. I do not have the book in front of me right now. I completely <laughs> forgot to grab it. Oh, that's well. Pretty, pretty that's pretty much it. <laughs> thank you um but over over the course of the weekend additional things were kind of dropped and at some point we started getting uh journal entries left behind by Ketchup coyote and from those journal entries we eventually were able to deduce hey there are some weird capital letters that are written strangely in these things why <laughs> and then eventually we we're like why does this spell a word <laughs> and then we we're why is there a cabin that's marked off with crime tape why is there a padlock that has oh i don't know letters that you can spin around <laughs> oh shit <laughs> um and eventually we were able to get in there. And we took a lot of photos because the little piece of paper on the inside of the padlock after you opened it was from Ketchup. I said, hey, there's actually another padlock, but also take only notes, leave the rest. Okay, fine. We did that. Um, yeah, that was <laughs> fun. It took some collaboration to get there because I didn't quite understand the, the, the message that was being sent by those journal entries at first because it looked like there were more letters that were darkened than just the capital letters. <laughs> I was trying to write down all of the letters that looked dark to me. And I was like, is this an abogida? Is this like tunic? 
Do I have to like <laughs> make things that sound like this? Do I have oh, to say no. them out loud in a specific order? And it actually makes these phonemes that I'm supposed to put together. And like, I was this is the coolest part ways. from my perspective, the coolest, the coolest part from my perspective was the amazing solutions people were coming up with that were so far off. <laughs> we were actually going for, but it was, you guys were, you were thinking so deeply about it some solutions i was like oh that would have been really good but <laughs> unfortunately it's much simpler than that i yeah i i was just like instantly full throttle we're going tunic mode on this thing bitch <laughs> oh no yeah, overthinking in my video game <laughs> yeah um so yeah good times um yeah but as soon as we figured out the okay so the the answer each one of the four notes, they were hidden very close to the main lodge. I didn't actually see any of them. They all got posted before I could find them because I didn't really know about them until they were posted. That's when I started getting involved in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's spelled T-A-L-E. Ha ha, like a story, except tale, except it's a pun. Ha ha, yeah. anyway. Um, so that was the code that we had to put into that alphanumeric uh, padlock in order to get the normal master lock combination to get into the cabin. Um, on the inside, it said, take only notes, leave the rest. Me being a smart ass, I thought it was being very literal. So I looked for something that said notes and I was going to steal it. Um, there was, was a thing that cool. said notes. <laughs> yeah. There was a whiteboard. And it said notes. It was a calendar for August. And it was August 21st with the time 6 p.m. written on it. And there was a smiley face on it, which I now know is Adler's doing. Yes. Yes. Adler was the other person who helped uh, develop the, the, the whole ARG. So for some context, and I'm not going to explain the joke because this is a family-friendly show. Called, <laughs> um, since when? <laughs> um, all of the journal entries that we found, those four journal entries that had the one letter per that got us the clue for tail, et cetera, um, all of those were dated August 21st at 5.59 p.m. Mm -hmm. All of them at the same time. So, yeah. Um, so it's a travel the world, learn the Dewey Decimal System, and I can't remember what the third thing was. Mm. But um, there was a world map with pins and red yarn between everything, and it's like, wow, that sure seems really obvious. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so on the compass rows, there was a sticker that said, remember this, and it was very obviously a Dewey Decimal number. So I wrote it down. Cool. Or actually, no, we took a photo of it. Um, took pictures of the the locations that had stickers next to them very thoughtfully. Thank you, by the way. Um, and then looked around, totally tore the place apart, put it back nicely. Um, saw that Gone Girl was definitely there. I was like, wow. Hmm. Yep. Definitely figured that one out. Thumbs up. Cool. <laughs> um, saw Romeo and Juliet. I was like, yeah, that that could be real. Maybe. Maybe, probably not. Uh, saw the creepy doll, saw the creepy other things, went through the drawers and saw the creepy Christian stuff. Yeah, it was a time. <laughs> but she repeats the third, herself. The third book there. There was a third book on the shelf. I don't remember what the third book is. It was about uh, possums playing dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at that one, I don't think. Yeah, that was uh, along with Gone Girl and Romeo and Juliet. We wanted to have three books up there that had a, the idea of playing dead or uh, faking one's disappearance kind of a thing. As okay, well. Yeah. cool. So there was a theme to that. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I love that. I was so close to stealing that whiteboard calendar. You have no idea. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, so from my perspective, by the way, uh, which is great. Like we developed this uh, thinking that they would have been at the, in the, the cabin by the first night. Um, but everybody was struggling with the journal, the journal puzzle. Uh, so I had gone to Adler and said, I think that the game's getting kind of extended. So we have to start thinking about how we can, you know, send them the message without <laughs> saying it outright, just to start to move the story along. And it was an amazing moment where, 
I believe, yeah, it was you. You came up to me and asked a question that would have only made sense if one had been inside the cabin. Uh huh. And I just stood there like, you've been in the cabin? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm like, you got in the cabin? And I got really excited. And I kind of broke character. Um, I broke character a lot after that because uh, I kept getting impressed by how how the solutions were coming together. Um, and and yeah, I think the cabin the cabin was very important to us. We wanted to have a thing where people could actually break into a cabin uh, yep. and without having to have us there. A quick backstory to that: uh, they were supposed to supply me with a padlock and to have a, a, a hasp and staples, so like the padlock lock part attached to the door. They had forgotten to do the hasp and staple for me. And when I went to pick up my padlock, it was an unlocked padlock without a key. So <laughs> I was like, "We're going to need the key." They said, "Oh, we can't give that to you." All of the padlocks have a master key that like anybody could get into any single place. That's when we replaced it with that uh, combination lock. Um, but the the whole idea was we wanted to have two elements that were almost like magic tricks, which is you break into this. You actually get to break into this cabin and there's more secrets trying to figure out what happened to this guy, Ketchup Coyote. Um, and then you eventually realize that uh, he's gone somewhere. The printer has actually informed us that the printer knows where Ketchup Coyote is and is trying to sort of like figure out what this all means. Um, but there are five items that have to be found to open the portal that could let you go hang out with, hang out with, be wherever Ketchup has gone to. Yep. Um, it should be also quickly noted that this year and last year was in the Tassel verse. So basically what we started in 2018 carried through. Um, through these two years, and the decision had to be like leave the tassel verse and go wherever ketchup is or stay. Um, uh, and you guys got to figure out the try to figure out where all the portal items were and how the portal would work. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> I spent three weeks on that log. <laughs> Can you explain the log? Because your experience with the log was probably much more interesting than mine. All I did was was hollow it out and. <laughs> spend weeks trying to set it up so we could do this magic trick that, that you're about to describe but yeah okay so <laughs> i'm so sorry by the way um <laughs> so we kind of found things right away for the most part um it wasn't supposed to be super obvious what the answer to everything on the inside of the cabin was mm -hmm. But I found somebody with a phone. <laughs> a phone that worked because I turned mine in so I can get the badge and I could get my Polaroid camera for free. Or my Fujifilm, rather. Um, I needed to verify. I was like, what is 862.31? I this is this is super familiar. Looked it up, Dewey Decimal for collections of Spanish literature. Like that by Don Miguel de Cervantes like Don Quixote. And I was like, mm, all right, <laughs> I know exactly what this is now. I wrote down all of the location names. I looked at the stickers. I was like, this is a letter pool. Okay. Some of the stickers had or, um, hyphens next to the letters. We're removing those letters from the letter pool. I removed Don Quixote. It was left with an anagram that said found coyote. We found ketchup. Hooray. <laughs> um, that was great. So I was very excited. I was like, we found ketchup. And you're like, where? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that just felt like we did things out of order at that point because we found coyote, but I don't know. So yeah. there it, were the five items there. You, you guys What's did find that? it in order. You did find things in order. You just you found things in this fast paced way all of a sudden. You guys, once you fell into it, you were gone. Like, I didn't even see you guys. You just show up and say, we've solved it. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So we were strategically maybe prowling around camp while big events were going on so that other people couldn't get a start. Anyway, um, we definitely thought that the, the okay. So to backtrack a little bit, um, the task printer from the year before is the same printer that was communicating with ketchup. The task printer came back. <laughs> so the task printer eventually actually got a nameplate. And that just kind of appeared one of the nights. 
Mm. Um, the task printer's nameplate had Dapple in quotes. And I forgot that mm. in some of the Don Quixote lore, that was the name of Don Quixote's horse. Did not remember that until the very end. And I was like, what the fuck is Dapple? <laughs> so that would have helped out a lot. Anyhow, so the printer was communicating with ketchup and was regularly pretty consistently around meal times because haha people are there it's gonna yeah. draw people's attention um it was pretty consistently on the minute for usually 15 to 20 minutes at a time and then they kind of picked up pace toward the end of the weekend um it was printing off its thoughts and communications that it had it was giving riddles it was lonely it was um it was contemplative it was kind of worried that it was going to be left alone it was concerned that we were going to have to make a choice to trust or not trust go or not go and if we decided to go after ketchup we would have to leave it behind so the printer made a choice to trust us after all of the things that we had done. We, I'm not inclusive because I wasn't there, but we as the campers, the, the people in the business casual universe, um, the, the camp participated last year and gave all of the bullshit answers to the chits that were printed out. Like, it figured that out. And it it made the conscious decision decision to forgive and say people realize that this shit is pointless and that they're being played. Why would they care? Why would they play along? And it made the decision to trust people anyway. And it wanted to help catch up. So it was feeding us all of this information knowing that we had good intentions in our hearts anyway. And it, I am one to get drawn into stories. I get emotionally attached to characters that are not real. This is just how I be. I've been big into fiction my entire life. And of course I got kind of drawn into shit like that. I'm like, God damn it. Okay, I'm getting an attachment to a wooden box with an Arduino on it. God damn it. <laughs> Um, so I went about everything and I, I, I stuck around every time I printed, I was writing down the clues. I was solving the riddles within two minutes. Um, it was, it was a good time. Um, eventually I had the, the riddles that I needed to find the five items to open the portal. So it turns out that ketchup intentionally went into the world of Don Quixote and left people behind. He lied. And what we failed to realize was that in all four of those journal entries that he wrote, I think it was the first letter of each sentence you said. Yeah. It spelled out, I lied. But in a clever way, I thought basically the first two paragraphs, it was isle, like an island, I-S-L-E, uh -huh. and E-Y-E-D, I'd. So you have to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Um so Which I was, was like halfway wonderful. there with the sounding things out thing. I was just looking at the wrong characters. Yeah. 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 That yep. was an amazing moment. That was a great moment when uh, you guys had figured it out, but you could you hadn't figured it out. So they were sitting there saying, I lied. Like, you know, the way a person <laughs> would say like, it, like, I lied. <laughs> and I was about to like, say it again. And it was Hunter. Hunter. Hunter was a coyote. Was yep. saying like I lied. I was like, say it faster. He's like, I lied. It's like, say it faster. He's like, I lied. You did. And then at that point, everybody was like, oh, oh. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I want some scotch. God damn it! Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we ended up finding all but one of the five items that we needed until the very end. Mm -hmm. So. We figured out that the first item, what was something that 
oh gosh, what was it? It was something that attendees would have mm. that the printer had that people not attending wouldn't have, and it was a con badge. I think it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, what would what would uh, you have, but somebody who hasn't attended Feral? Okay, it wasn't something that yeah. included the printer. Okay. Yeah. So we figured out it was a con badge. So we were looking for a con badge that was ketchups, and we couldn't find it. And it turns out that's really funny, and I'll come back to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the second one, the donkey? Uh, I think the one might have been the uh, pinwheel. Okay, so... <laughs> as I'm starting to figure things out, um, I'm going around looking for con badges, and I, I have this bright idea, like, where could I get a con badge that was lost? Let's go to con ops. <laughs> And I go to con ops and you're walking out with a giant fucking pinwheel sticking out of your backpack. Yeah. And I point you <laughs> and you're like, it's not ready yet. And you just <laughs> run away. I ran away. I, I didn't really cover that time. At that point, you guys were just out for blood. So I had to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had been looking around for like two hours at that point for a pinwheel. And we already found one with the Canadian flag in front of Conops, but that wasn't the right pinwheel. Yeah, we should have caught that actually early on and gotten rid of that thing. <laughs> that, was from, that was the campers, uh, the previous campers. But yeah, I think donkey uh, the donkey was next. So, yes. Um, so the pinwheel, yeah. You said the third was which one? Uh, the donkey. Okay. Yeah. I am mad. I am so mad. I went to the stables five times and I went through the stables five times thinking they had to be there somewhere. There had to be something hidden back there because where else would something <laughs> dappled be that had anything to do with a donkey? And I figured dapple was something to do with like, okay, sure. Equestrians. Dappled Ooh. horse. Okay, I'll go by the horses. Why not? All right, so no. I'm standing there outside of Main Lodge, just like brain cooked, staring out at the lake. <laughs> and Adler's like sneaking around the bush, going over to the, the cork board and sticks this terribly drawn donkey on cardboard up to the cork board. Couldn't get it to stay. <laughs> eventually picked his own finger trying to get it to stay on the board and just like shoved it in the corner and like stood there staring somewhere. I went up next to him, took it, unpinned it. <laughs> he was standing right next to me. Didn't even see me the whole time. I turned back to people from my cabin. I'm like, uh, -uh. and I just wholesale steal it and leave. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> there's um, a bit of backstory to that one we had a whole bunch of things that were supposed to be the donkey and, and they all kind of fell apart as we were on site um in the end we were going to just get a i was just said adler draw a donkey we're going to frame a picture we're going to put it up somewhere and then we couldn't find any frames i'm like this is ridiculous we've gone too far put something up put a donkey thing up somewhere he's like and the whole thing was put it up but be very stealth about it don't, don't just like go and do it in front of people. The the story you told me was like he was darting eyes about to see if he was being watched while you're standing on the stairs or something, just watching. <laughs> Literally just watching him do the so whole funny. thing. So funny. <laughs> that was so good. Um, yeah. And then was, and you, had was Gary. you had to deal with poor Gary. Um, <laughs> yeah. Printer. Gary didn't cooperate. He did not. No, and eventually I ended up finding you because I kept looking around for this other printer. I went back to ConOps because <laughs> allegedly Gary was in ConOps, but Gary was being very ornery. Wouldn't yes. give the printout, and eventually you gave us the printout because yes. we went back to the cabin again while yep. people were still setting it up again. Yep. And yeah. It's really hard to do uh, secretive setups at a camp when everybody's running around looking for things. Um, at all times of day and night yeah so i had a 20 foot by 10 foot sheet of black muslin which i put up in front of the uh cabin to kind of block it out so people couldn't see what was going on that was all like that was the only solution i could find but 
you guys solved the uh new york times uh uh whatever that one's called connections to yeah, out the, the yeah, yeah. um yeah but even me who is not up on pop culture stuff i was like why do i know these titles so much oh it's just four words four times yeah oh it's hardcover gone girl okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. we have a soft cover which was ex extra fun for that uh, yeah you put a sticker on it that said hardcover yeah we had to <laughs> <laughs> Because there was supposed to be a hardcover. Uh, that's that's another fun Adler thing. He showed up with that one. I'm like, okay, I made the puzzle, but that's okay. We can make this work. Don't um, worry about it. Fine. But the Fine. the fifth, we didn't actually give you a puzzle for the fifth one because we told you that the fifth, you've had the puzzle the entire time for the fifth one. Um, yeah. And you kind of left it at that. Um, and I can't remember how you guys figured it out. Because I had said that you've had it the whole time. Somebody already wrote about this. Somebody already told you uh what the fifth item would be and uh it turned out it was in that original thing that ketchup coyote had written in the con book that originally said that he was uh you know said that there was trouble he's suspicious of things um right. and then there was the thing mentioning at the end of that uh he said you may have to leave it behind but you'll still oh, need yeah, it. yeah 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 oh right thank you for reminding <laughs> me because i was going to completely forget about the cabin skit yeah <laughs> okay so um, each year it's tradition mm -hmm. um, that each cabin does a skit. It's not a requirement. It used to be. Used to be. Um, but our cabin skit um, was a bit of a ruse this year. So as it happens, um, one lovely member of the audience that I'm not going to point out um, happened to get injured during Predator vs. Prey. And yeah. Um, he decided to have story time and in the process of doing story time, I snuck into the main lodge, disconnected the printer. Um, <laughs> my dear friend pilot an Australian shepherd who will be visiting actually in a couple hours, um, went in with me, um, got all ready to go. I handed him the disconnected printer. I left the power supply behind. Um, and, the the joke was that pilot with the printer in hand the the fifth item to open the portal because it had an nfc tag on the bottom of the printer um was going to bowl over this other cabin mate of ours who was definitely on crutches who was definitely injured and he was going to do a stunt fall um at the end of the skit and run away with the printer and at the end the staff was like we need that He's gone. And it was great. I, I loved it. It was fantastic. It made my night. It was the best. <laughs> That's so good. Um, now, how did you open the portal, though? Um, so <laughs> the, the, the first item, which we did not get, um, apparently on Saturday, was it? Um, apparently, Adler had been wearing the Ketchup yep. Coyote badge most of the day. Yes. And a totally different camper, Nick, ended up um, seeing that and being like, I want that, and then took it. So Nick had the Ketchup Coyote badge. And one of the times that we were going to check con ops for my glasses that I lost, not these, these are my new ones. Um, I did find those other pair, by the way. Oh, really? Cabin clean out. <laughs> um, when I was going there to check Lost and Found to see if they showed up, I was waiting outside with Varric and happened to be just like staring at the ground. And I was just like, what the fuck? Oh, oh, it's the Ketchup Coyote badge. And I was like, I don't know this guy. He's like, can I have that? And he's like, why? Why do you want it? <laughs> I need that. Why do you need it? What do you buy? I buying? need to open the portal to go see Don Quixote. And he's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, turns out, yeah. So this guy had it. Um, that was great. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, we lost. Nah. No, actually, it was just a collaborative thing this whole time. That was great. Uh, our, our little um, skullduggery group of however many people it was i ended up getting four of the five objects that was pretty neat um nick definitely found that one right away so that was awesome so um once we had everything and closing ceremonies finished up for the year we trounced our way over to um 
the cabin. We waited until sundown and uh, we attempted to open the cabin. It did not want to. A flipper zero had to get involved and then it was open. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we opened the cabin and then I looked inside and I was just like, did we do it right? Because the map was still in there and then it looked like it wanted something else. And then I was worried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you weren't there. And yep. then I was really worried. Yeah, because it was for you guys to solve. Like I I, I avoided it on purpose. Um, I didn't want to be there when, when you guys were breaking into cabins and stuff. I wanted you to do it without my presence. Um, but you did eventually figure out how to turn on the portal. Yep. Yeah, it was a, a hollowed out log with an RFID reader on the inside. Do you know how much of my life went into making that log work? All I wanted was a log that people would pass these items over. It would beep. <laughs> and if you put all five, five items over, over it, it triggered a, a light show, basically, a, a portal uh at that thing that we had nothing to do we wanted it set up again so that you guys did it without us having to be there uh -huh. um, those lights uh, I, I i brought in the help of somebody that works at a hack lab so he's, he's sort of a builder um and he got those lights really cheap they basically look like neon lights but they're leds oh cool um, and we spent a lot of time trying to plan out how we were going to make this work because it had to work that five unique beeps on this log <laughs> would result in just this like a room and turning on and then after a minute it would shut off the idea being that like it'll run for a minute um i spent uh two and a half weeks hollowing out that log because it was waterlogged i used chisels i used drills it got to the point where the chisels i had were not long enough to go deep enough to, to actually uh get it close enough to the surface that the sensor would work so there were i spent more than one all night like i literally would start at like 10 p.m and at about six in the morning i decided to give it a break oh, uh to shit. get that all of that log working that was my that was my my prestige right of this year that was the prestige it had to work so it, i had to make it happen i have a second log here that's half hollowed out but it became a problem so i had to work on the other one to try to make it work um but i was so happy that like 60 people showed up to watch that happen um and like I say I'm happy that 60 people showed up because I usually expect that the deeper lore stuff that I'm working on, two or three people will get involved and they'll be like thrilled about it. And that that's enough for me. That means like that means somebody like paid attention. Half the campers, they just want to go swimming and stuff, right? So the yeah, rest well. is just for so color. Um but yeah, it, the whole development of this thing started literally when I realized that our gone coyote sounded like Don Quixote. Um, the inspiration for led, led up to that itself, like was I, I worked for a company called the mysterious package company for a little while. And um, the quick, quick rundown of what they do, you buy a, you buy one of these experiences for a friend. You don't buy it for yourself unless you're a big collector. Some people did, but you buy it for a friend, but you don't tell them you bought it. You give us some information about your friend um, that would allow us to send them a letter that would convince them that this was real um the letters would come from law firms and if you went online you could find the law firms we actually had to go talk to the like ontario barristers to get permission to have this fake law firm website up we That's talked awesome. to um we talked to the postmaster general in the u.s and we actually became pretty close with the postmaster general because we were sending packages over the border that looked like they could be weird suspicious things um uh, there was actually one thing i got to watch in real time which was in jacksonville florida they uh they got there at a police station somebody brought in one of the crates which is the third third item you get is a nailed in shit crate which has the object that was sort of being alluded to throughout the entire story that draws you in as if like your great uncle did this thing and there's a statue this evil this person did not know what it was so they brought it to the police they evacuated three blocks three city blocks and they were bringing in the bomb and we were watching it on tv literally like do we interject or do we just stay because this wasn't the first time that had happened but we got to watch it on on the news um and the most amazing thing the police were like showing pictures of our product 
saying like, if anybody knows anything about this, and we're like, okay, they're going to figure it out by this point. The police have to figure it out. And somebody's phone rang. We don't have anybody, any phones out in public. Somebody's phone rang. They answered it. And it was a journalist who had figured it out. It was one of the journalists down in Jacksonville. Um, yeah. And they, they evacuated three city blocks because of this thing. Uh, we had been contacted by the FBI twice. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember that. Who's the guy that, the old guy that did um, Watchmen. The old guy now. He's the old, what's his name? The comic guy. Oh, uh, Stanley. No, no, not Stanley. Watchmen, like the uh, he's oh, he's uh. a British guy, right? Um, uh, I can never remember his name. Um, he's he's a bit of a crotchety, angry person. Um, well, that narrows it down. More Dave yeah. Gibbons. Um, uh, watch. Anyways, somebody in the audience, you know it. Scream it out loud. We heard it. Oh, thanks. That's right. That's right. Um, he somebody bought one for him. Uh, and he went on a rant to announce, like, basically he disowned a fan. Literally disowned a fan. He told the fan, like, you know, don't read my stuff anymore. And, like, was was so pissed off because he felt like it was, a, a, like, it had, like, interfered with his privacy. But what you're getting from this is this experience where you're immersed into this idea that your great uncle died and left this thing to you. And there's all these, you get to, usually about two packages, up to six packages before you get to this crate. And in the crate, of course, you have to pry it open with a with a hammer and most people didn't have those you they would see unboxing people where people are using butter knives like he actually hammered right shut um and the other thing that sells this all is that uh the actual company was basically run by uh, a props master a guy who's been making props for um the uh, like movies and tv shows and and he's he's a furry he's actually one of the founders of camp pharaoh nice. uh and he they would make these the pages like newspaper pages would be run through the tea room, which of course would stain it to make it look old, but they'd also literally do passes where they'd walk along the ground and drag it along the concrete ground to stress it a bit more. So the, when you got your item, it looked like it was old. It was hefty. It was like, it did not feel fake. Um, and people would freak out over these things that they were getting. And then of course, a week later, they get this uh, black envelope with a wax seal. And when they open it up, it reveal it was the reveal and it told them the mysterious package company this person bought this for you it's an experience um so i got in, immersed into this kind of world i got i became the voice of the company um where i was a guy writing uh all the newsletters and and i created two well one character called the messenger which was this guy who wandered in off the street found a computer and had been doing all their social media but he didn't actually work there he was just doing it <laughs> um and there was a definite sort of play on uh that you're in a dangerous magical place um the curator was probably born in victorian times he's still around though um and like people would go into the basement and never come back or or appear in like argentina like just just we threw in all these things about like this like warehouse 13 kind of stuff almost mm. because of course we curated all these items and we were sending the items out into the world for people to deal with um so i i got sort of immersed through that they were really big on args uh, there's a Oh, there's an amazing documentary about an ARG in San Francisco. Um, the the I'll, I'll remember it before before I get to the end. But uh, that and also the movie The Game by Dave Fincher was a big inspiration. Um, the idea of like you're in you're in, immersed in an experience that you did not realize was everybody else is in on it, kind of a thing. Um, so from that, I also got a lot of inspiration from. The meta, meta narratives of the, the McElroy brothers. I'm a big fan of the McElroy brothers, um, who do uh, Monster Factory uh, on YouTube and have the Adventure Zone, um, and they have this really cool way of adding a narrative to something that shouldn't have a narrative. Um, these meta narratives where they'll play. Uh, I think there was a a, a physics engine game. Um, where you just crush cars and machines and stuff like that. You had these big, big like things that would crush cars. You could th drive them off the edge of cliffs. They turned a story into that. It's called Carboys. So if you look <laughs> for Carboys on YouTube, it's just, they, they had these, this cool way of adding a narrative over top of everything. So I was watching this happen. I was like, this is interesting. And the last thing that really inspired me for doing all this stuff was um, Melbourne, the Melbourne comedy scene. So in Australia, there's a whole style of comedy sort of that's emerging 
it has been emerging for about 10 years. The biggest people are anti Donna are the biggest comedy troupe um, from that. They did a thing called Bikey Wars, the musical that was kind of funny on Funny or Die for a while. People, people had seen that, but there's another group called Hot Department, which is a big, I'm a big fan of, and a, and a new one called Big, Big, Big. And what sets them apart from the rest is they do humor, generally childish, stupid, absurdist humor, but there's always a point where things go serious and they play the serious as serious like this is not fun anymore kind of thing um but it was so you almost forget how stupid the humor was before that moment there was one one of their big sketches anti donna is everything's a drum and are running around and everything they tap they can, they're like everything's a drum doop, doop. so they're tapping things to get drum noises um that somebody taps on the crotch somebody else is like dick basically like doop, 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 you get this drum noise but then at one point one of them takes off their hat and taps it and there's no sound and they turn to one of the other members and they're like, what the fuck, Broden? You said everything was a drum. And like it gets serious, but it gets so heavy and heavy. They're, one of them's like, I left my farm. I left my wife. I let you drum on my penis. <laughs> it's like so serious until one of them taps a hat. It's drum noise. It's like, oh, no, guys, I did it wrong. And then it's back to everything's a drum. But you had this like serious, serious moment. That... I always wanted to interject a moment and I'm so glad I watched you tell the story about the printers, the printer story about forgiveness, because that's what I wanted. Just like last year, I wanted people to feel bad that the, the main message from last year was don't like people judge other people from what they think that person is up to so, so quickly nowadays. So they thought the up that upper management was treating them like fools, like the menial jobs were just like, but it was actually this sentient life trying to understand them. I wanted people to feel bad that they basically had done this. And this time around, I wanted people to sort of think, you know, the AI, like to understand that this life is a life we don't understand. Uh, we we can only understand because it's telling us. It's like taking the time to tell us a story. Yep. And even though it's a ridiculous thing, it's a little printer in a box. But I wanted people to like get kind of teary. Um, last year, one of our staff uh, took me aside on the last day before the bus came and told me this story. Like he, he was bawling. Like and it was about the story about the, the sentient printer sort of realizing that he was, that he actually was alive. And it's like, I want those things to happen. Mm -hmm. So the people have, it's like bursting a reality bubble. You're here at camp. You're having fun. I don't want anything heavy. No bummers. I don't want anything that's going to make people sad for a crappy reason, but I have an opportunity to, I'm not interested in being political, but I'm interested in getting people thinking about something, like thinking, thinking about something they might not have thought of. Um, and that's, it was so important to me that like people would cry because <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be that way at first. I was just writing a stupid story, but then there's a point where I realized, uh Oh, this is about friendship <laughs> and <laughs> leaving a friend behind and empathy. And like, it's like, you have like this sentient, this printer, maybe thinking about other people more than you are thinking about other people think about that kind of a thing um and i don't want it to be that aggressive but like you know i want i want people to think um and there was a vote we, we left it to the to the campers to vote are we going to stay or are we going to go yeah. um overwhelmingly people decided to vote to go um because which we expected but we did have a plan it, basically they were choosing the theme for next year um and uh by saying they were going the one thing I'll, I'll just it's not really a spoiler but it's obviously what it will be the the entrance where you go into registration next year will obviously be the portal the lights will be there so you're entering the new world when you step in and that's where you're going to try to catch up with ketchup and that'll be yep. the third part of the trilogy yeah so it's it's ridiculous this is a this is a furry convention this is a furry convention theme do you know why i did this <laughs> I did this because about when we did the tassel theme, I, I took every furry convention theme from Wikifur and I made a spreadsheet. And I, I narrowed things, I boiled things down. So if something was like Nightmare on Elm Street, I changed it to horror. And I tried to boil it down to the basics. I wanted to see what are the themes that everybody's doing over and over again. And do you know what I found? I hmm. found things like aviation, baseball, the Roaring Twenties, Alice in Wonderland being done 10 12 15 times by different cons and i was so sad because <laughs> i'm like 
aviation really the olympics like it feels like a, it almost felt like a I, I i feel like i'm being real ass right now but like it felt like i was looking at like a, a public school like what a teacher would do when they around the olympics they dress up the room to look like the olympics and like we could do so much more with these just be so creative and that's when around the time the tassels kind of came to be um because tassels are blank you can do anything you want so we made a world that was the tassels were everywhere they were ubiquitous tassels meant everything um and it, that's the year that people started to realize that there was something wrong with us and then i liked that i wanted that to be that way i wanted people to think like i wanted people to i wanted other cons to think crap we have to maybe do something a bit different because we're going to do aviation next year or whatever um, and our themes get, get stolen um literally to the point of our the theme theme uh was stolen by another con who actually even took the the whole like typography we used because everything was in square brackets and stuff uh-huh. and we used the same kind of wording that we used um a year after it came from camp Farrell, another con did it came from tv and we used the same font that we used for our <laughs> it came from camp Farrell font hold up uh, yeah yeah was that mff 2013 yes it was <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> was my first con was- 2011 was was our, it came from Camp Farrell and the font that they used for it came from TV was the same font we used for our like it was like it was exactly the same. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, and the year that okay. we did tassels, the the other two cons in in Ontario incorporated tassels into their theme because they knew that we were doing tassels to like dare people to steal tassels. Uh-huh. So one did, one did graduation and there was a tassel as part of their con book, and the other did sort of a. a they were really risque. They did kind of like a, um, a risky dancing kind of theme. Uh, they they basically you got you got one nipple nipple pasties with a tassel on it as part of your as you con. Do. yeah as you do normally. <laughs> so they incorporated tassels sort of as a little nod, um, but like yeah, I just I didn't start out thinking that we'd do be doing a game, and I didn't start out thinking that like the lore that would be built up over the years would become more and more and more and more um but once it started happening i was like okay this has this has to keep going yes, it has please. to get so deep and so weird that I, I want it like that at the end a couple of people really catch it and then other people realize okay that was planned like 10 years ago um and it's for i'm be, gonna be selfish a lot of it is just for me it's not even for recognition because it's hard to get recognition for developing a con theme that's weird i just want to sit there and see people get excited about something. Uh, one exactly. thing we used to say at Camp Farrell or at, Camp, at a mysterious package company is uh, that we wanted to renew people's sense of wonder, which I think is like a great way to put it. Uh, we wanted to make people realize like after their experience, you see the world differently because you're walking around and it feels like there's this layer over the world of this strange thing. Uh, you know, stranger things kind of covered it actually, so, you know, like this layer over the world, there's these strange things happening in our own world it's just we can't see them because they're hidden somehow um and and absurd absurdism is very important to me as well um the dataist movement is basically my my life uh andy kaufman nothing makes me nothing makes me laugh harder than the idea of a joke that i don't get to be there to see the punchline but i know that i've set it up so that somebody gets home and they see something they're like oh man and like to me that's hilarious to see them say, oh man, I don't care. I just know what happened. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, and that that's important to me. Is like uh, data is very important to me, just like the absurdness. I like this, I like the line, uh, nonsense is better than no sense at all. I'd rather see nonsense than no sense. Um, and that's sort of what we try strive to do, and that's what's carrying through to next year. Um, and we're sticking with the literature. Yep. Uh, the theme is actually uh, we haven't really announced it but we'll announce it here hey how about that it's hey. it's because it's, uh, it's the third it's the end of this trilogy it's called book end um, two words so we get kind of a book end you also get the book's end um, and it's it's going to be a, a big bigger game than we've done before um, with probably much narrative as we did this year and we got we got a new helper, um, Tormont. Do you remember? Remind me who it is who's helping us this year with the theme. I don't know. I'm sorry. You don't know. It's I. It's, I swear his name starts with a T, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Tim. 
Torm, 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 Tim, Tim, it must be a Tim, Tim mod. Um, Our mod donut, I don't know. <laughs> oh, count donut. Um, yeah, like it's gonna be so much. Like, I just want it to be fun for the people that want fun. <laughs> if you want to participate, you can participate. Um, if you don't want to participate, you don't have to participate. And dude, I'm gonna. This is. I'm not gonna. I yeah, ramble. You guys. You guys opened up a forum and allowed me to talk. Um, <laughs> hey, it's been great. One of the coolest parts about building a story is the stuff that you didn't actually get to share. Um, and in in 2017, we came up with this big theme idea about it was gonna be like a Mandela effect touched with the multiple universes. Because up to that point, from 2010 up to 2016. We had villains every year. There was always a villain that was actually a staffer or somebody else. Um, there was Jason Furhees, the one year Slender Moose, the one year. But we had Evil Neo. Neo's Neo's one of the former staffers. Evil Symbio, who's a normal, former staffer. Uh, King Timber was was the evil one from t- 2014, um, and they all ended up in the same universe. So the t- 2017, uh, and this all came from a vision. I wanted desperately all of our villains doing a scooby stack so like we're they're looking around the corner but they're all stacked up their heads are like so we had that with them peeking around a tree on the on the art um in the order of which they like the top was like jason furhees and it went down through the order of 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 years and we came up with so much stuff for that year um to explain what had happened how the universes had kind of like crashed together and we ended up not releasing any of it because it was also our, our 20th anniversary so we wanted to just play it cool. <laughs> so, like people were like, I don't want to go too crazy. I had like reams and reams of of, of content that I was going to try to work into it. Uh, so we decided to go all out for tassels instead, and uh, we also kind of did the same thing there, where the the universe was built, and we by doing all that extra work, it feels more real. The fact that most people didn't see the magazine that I made for it, or we didn't actually get around to finishing the documentary, but we did plan out a 45 minute segment of a documentary that would have been on a VHS tape that like was partly taped over. And that's why you only get 45 minutes. It seems like it's from some alternate universe. Um, and behind me actually uh, is the world tassel, which is a large tassel, which if you open up, there's a little planet earth in there um, because part of the lore is that there's a giant tassel that envelops planet earth um and that was going to play big into the the theme as well but that just didn't come out because there was no way to do it in a way that we could communicate it where people would enjoy it you know what i mean like we'd have two people like oh that's kind of neat but we didn't want to confuse people because we already do that enough um but all that stuff's still there all that stuff's still there that, that's the cool thing about building a lot of lore it's always still there, even if you don't use it. It could come out later. <laughs> um, but yeah, this year was a lot of fun. Uh, and it was interesting thinking about uh, games, building a game uh, layered. You're thinking of that through time rather than you're thinking like on a page. This, has, this story has to come out tomorrow afternoon. So if we want to tell the story right, they have to figure out this part by tomorrow afternoon. It's very interesting. But I'm going to cut off there because I'm still rambling. And I think we want to make up a a game don't we (laughs) well it's funny you should say that um (laughs) if you're looking for layered universes we have a certain series called gun gods that perhaps you could make use of um (laughs) no absolutely not that is 100 (laughs) percent a joke please do not do that that's too late i've already tweeted oh fuck (laughs) (laughs) um anyways yes uh well Thank you very much, both of you, for that very long exposition about what went on <laughs> and the and the ideas behind everything. Um, this seems as good a time as any to go into music segment number two, so we can all stew about that a little bit uh, while also <laughs> listening to good music. <laughs> um, so let's start off with a remix from Kirby's Dream Course entitled Funky Mountain Peaks by Cyril the Wolf, Zach Parrish, and Tia Sori, followed by a remix from Earthbound entitled Bonhomme de Neige by Ridley Snipes and Earth Kid, and then finishing off with a remix from Super Metroid entitled Red Harvest by Ridley Snipes, Zalif, Amy Nader, Zach Parrish, and JSA Blixer.
There's our meep. We did it. We did the meep. I think I might have gotten a corrupted version of the last song, so that's why it cut out kind of like mid musical stanza there. Um, <laughs> oops. Because uh, it says like 214 long. That was 214, but that definitely should have continued. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, yes. So uh, to kind of update everybody on tonight, though, since we are running a bit long, which is of, of nobody's particular fault. Um, we are going to skip ad hoc design tonight, uh, but we will definitely invite you back, uh, another time there, Rue. Thank you for joining us for tonight, for sure, and sharing all your insights and process and all that. That's very cool to hear about all that stuff. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me talk. <laughs> I like to talk about this kind of stuff, and there's not many venues to do that, so. Right, yeah. As somebody who wishes he had the energy to do something very long-term, like what you were describing, it's like, oh, man, that sounds so fun to do and plan out and, and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But um, it's it's great to at least hear about it uh, secondhand and at 1.5 <laughs> hand from uh, Tormod's experience of it, too. So um, thank you to you both for expanding on all of that. Um, and we will de we will delay uh, the next ad hoc design for whenever <laughs> for for next <laughs> month um, or the month after and then whenever you feel like you can make it and obviously do not feel obligated to do so. Uh, Rue, you are welcome to join us for that. It sounds exciting, so I'd love I'd love to 
be a part of it at some e point. Excellent, excellent. Um, with that, we are reaching the end of Insert Credits Round 125. Um, anything further to add before we wrap up for tonight so I can go eat something and or pass out on the couch? I think I'm good to go. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Well, with that, thank you for watching, listening, reviewing the recording, whatever you, however you happen to uh, consume this particular podcast or media experience. Uh, I am Mr. Bond. I'm Tormod. And of course, we've got Rue with us. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Is it the beginning? We're starting again? All right. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, leave you, we'll leave you with our typical closing track, a remix from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest entitled Forest Through the Trees by Shay's Violin. Good night, everybody. Ciao. Aww.